Hello everyone. C'est bon, ok. So I'm glad to see there's many people in the room. So we have only 15 minutes, so I won't be able to explain you everything about no estimates. What we'll see today is how we can adopt uh, no estimate. We start the adoption of no estimates as a development team. So let me introduce myself. My name is Julien Topsu. I'm a lead dev at La Société Générale, which is a French bank. And I'm very lucky because I can say that I'm working with No Estimates since uh, 2015. And today we'll see how to evaluate the redates without uh, traditional estimation. To be able to do that, we need to work first on our predictability. What does it mean? So perhaps you are using Kanban and Jira and you already see that kind of uh, graph. So this is basically a control flow chart that you can use in Jira. In that chart, you can see the evolution of what we call the cycle time of a team. Do you know what is the cycle time? No? Okay, the cycle time is the duration between the moment where a developer has started a task until the moment uh, this task has been released in production, okay? So that's basically something that is really used in Kanban, but you can use that as well uh, with Scrum. Here, with the, the red line, you can see the average cycle time value of a team in a three-month period. You can see that uh, this value is around four days and f uh, 17 hours, sorry. And the thing to be predictable is exactly like when you are training yourself for a race. If you want to do a 10 kilometer race in one hour, you have to maintain an average speed of 10 kilometers per hour, obviously. You can be a bit faster sometimes, you can be a bit slower sometimes, but at the end, you have to maintain globally this average speed to be predictable. This is exactly the same thing here. So, uh, to be able to maintain that speed, we have here two means. The first one is what we call the rolling average. This is basically the blue line you can see. So when this line is decreasing, it means that your average cycle time is also decreasing. But in decreasing, this is the opposite. So as a team, in every retrospective, we are taking a look at it and we try to understand what's going on, why we are faster, why we are slower. Another thing that is really important here is the standard deviation, which is the blue area around the blue line. And you can see at the end of the chart that the task needed between zero to eight days to be completed around the average cycle time, which is really close to four days. So it seems really unlikely. I mean, we can't be predictable when your task can take twice uh, the value of your cycle time, okay? So we need to be uh, sure that we will have the smallest standard deviation we can. It's better to have a standard deviation between three and five days when your average cycle time is around four days. So how can we make sure to have a small standard deviation? To be able to do that, we have chosen to say uh, until uh, we will have only two sizes for the task. The tasks that are too big and the tasks that are small enough. The too big one has to be split. The small enough one are tasks that we are able to do in the average cycle time. Okay? Does it, does it make sense? So we have realized with another uh, diagram, which is named the cumulative flow diagram, that we were doing two days of coding in every cycle time. So each time we create a new task, we are wondering if, if we are starting it this morning, are we able to finish that tomorrow evening? If so, that's a good size for the task. It means that all the tasks we have has exact, have exactly the same size. We no longer use um, tasks to describe a technical scope or a functional scope. But don't worry, I'm not talking about user stories. I'm talking only about tasks. We were decomposing all the, 
all the user story into tasks. So this way we have calibrated, in a way, all the tasks to make sure we can maintain the average cycle time. So, now you have done that, we can measure something that is called the throughput. The throughput is the number of tasks you are delivering each week. So let's imagine you're, you are delivering five tasks a week, and now you have a backlog to do which has 10, 10 tasks. You can say that I will be able to do that in, in two weeks. The thing is, we know already we will do a bit more, we will do a bit less, and usually we will do less. So how can we uh, simulate that evolution of cycle time? So we are using something that is called the Monte Carlo method using Bootstrap that is using past evolution of the cycle time to be able to predict the future release date of our backlog. I will show you how it works. So I'm using a spreadsheet that has been developed by someone named Adrian Fitolani who has made a very interesting talk uh, uh, available on InfoQ, named uh, how to uh, use uh, Monte Carlo to forecast delivery dates. And this is a fork of uh, the original page. You can see here the history of uh, the throughput of a team. For each sprint, we set the number of tasks we were able to complete. So for the first one, we did four tasks, for the second one, six, and so on, and so on. And the tool will compute the average cycle time for each sprint in this line, okay? The thing is, I, I won't be able to explain you in 15 minutes everything, I mean, the way the algorithm works, but in fact, it will simulate, it will create 1,000 scenario of possible evolution of your cycle time by picking up values in those averages. And we compute a new average cycle time. So if you take a look of, uh, on this first scenario here, you can see that all the values has been taken in the list of the averages. A value can be picked up several times. And here you have a new value of the average cycle time. So now we have 1,000 scenarios, and we will apply the backlog on each of them. So here we have the number of tasks in, the, in our backlog. And for each of the scenarios, we will, we will uh, estimate, uh, using the average cycle time of each of them, the completion uh, date. Say, for example, for the first scenario, which has a bit more than 1.5 days per task for the average cycle time, the expected uh, uh, completion time will be a bit more than six sprints, okay? So with all those, we will draw that kind of chart. This is a distribution of the completion date of each scenario. You can see here that 6% of the scenarios in cumulative has completed in the five sprints, in, in five sprints. So it seems very unlikely for us to be able to, to, to do this backlog in five sprints. But on the other hand, here, 96% of the scenarios has, have completed in nine sprints. So it seems that we will be able to do that in nine sprints. And we have introduced something that doesn't exist in traditional estimation, which is the confidence interval. This is the 96%. And this is how we are able to forecast the dates using the past evolution of our cycle time. But I have to warn you before, if you want to, to do such things, first you need to stabilize your cycle time. So let's imagine that one week you are delivering five tasks a week. The week after you are doing 10 tasks, then 15, and then you are going back to two tasks a week. That's too erratic, so the tool won't be able to help you. It, it, you can have several reasons why your cycle time is not stable enough. You can have a turnover, uh, ramp-ups and stuff like that. 
but you need first to stabilize it to be able to use that kind of tool. And this is not easy to do that. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to explain you how we can work on it, on that particular part. So something you can ask me is, uh, do we have to split everything at the beginning? So in fact, yes and no. Uh, if, unfortunately, you, ha you still have to ensure a scope at a specific date because you are agile, maybe you will have to, yes, uh, if it's not expensive to, s to split your user stories. But keep in mind that we are agile, so we won't be able to catch everything at the beginning, and we don't want to do an analysis phase, and then a coding phase, and then a testing phase, and so on and so on. We know that unexpected stuff will, will come out. But if your product owner comes and is asking you, OK, I have five epics, fuzzy epics, by the way, and I would like to know if you are able to do that in the next three months. What you can do, you can keep estimating uh, epics with uh, t-shirt sizing. And for an epic of size L, you should take a look of all the epics of the same size you have done already and compute the number of tasks that was needed. Then take the average, and you will be able to simulate what can be the backlog in terms of number of tasks for what your product owner is asking you to estimate. Okay? And then you will be able to inject that back to the tool I just showed you to see if you are able to do that in three months. Another question you can have is, how accurate is Monte Carlo? In fact, that's not the point, because we don't try to know exactly what will be the date where everything will be released. This is a tool that will help you to take decisions and to start your mutation, uh, um, to start the adoption of no estimate, because in no, on no estimate, you have to prioritize by the value instead of the cost. But if you are in a phase where everything is really, really stable, this tool can be uh, really good. Uh, for example, in, the, in one team I got, uh, for three months uh, projects, we have an error of uh, two, or one two weeks or one month. But when we had a lot of turnovers, we can't do anything with the tool. Another thing that is really complicated in that method is to maintain the calibration of your task during development. Uh, because if you have started something and it's taking more than two days of code to finish, you have to split what you are currently doing, create new tasks, and release in production what you have done. And if you are not in TDD, that's impossible to do such thing. So that's all I got. You have the link of Adrian, uh, the Adrian Fitolani's blog, where you can find the spreadsheet. Is uh, more explanation how technically everything is working with Monte Carlo, and uh, its talk on InfoQ. Uh, thank you very much.